What's up guys, my name is Matt, and in this video we're going to be making a guide for the Nomergon dungeon. Start right here with Murdoch, pick up the first quest, and Nomergon is one of the few vanilla dungeons that has a progressive quest, guys, meaning that you're going to get the quest and get started, and then it will uh, advance as you turn it in, and you'll pick up a new version of it after killing bosses. So Dead Mines is like that, I think the Botanica and Burning Crusade is like that too. Head over here, guys, and click on this. That should put a parachute into your inventory. Get that on your bar where you can jump down and dismiss any pets that you have. You're aiming for that big gear down there. You're going to jump, hit the parachute, and land on the gear, hopefully. Usually somebody in your group will fall or overshoot it, and then you have to kind of go down there and save them. Watch where the tank drops off so you can follow them. About right here. That looks good. Okay, get my pet out. You know, go circle back up with the group. So the person that you're looking for in here, not the person, but the boss, I should say, is over there. And that's the vicious fallout. So we'll clear this trash and then go pull him. And that's your first boss of the instance, guys. So there's a longer version of um, Nomergon that not a lot of groups will do, guys. And that version includes two bonus objective bosses, which are Grubbus and the Crowd Pummeler um, 960. No, no, I'm sorry. Let's see. Yeah, it's the Executioner 6000, I think, is the extra one. Uh, we'll, we'll look when we get over there. I'm trying to remember the names. It's been a minute, sorry. Um, so with the Vicious Fallout here, um, it's going to do an AoE Poison Nova type of a deal. I just got hit by it. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It just keeps you ticking. More than that, just watch out for the patrols so you don't end up pulling um, more um, ads as the group is trying to fight the boss. Other than that, there's not a whole lot special with this boss. Other than that, every once in a while it can drop an item called the Hydrocane, which allows you to breathe underwater if you equip it. And that's a staff uh, item. So if you want to have underwater breathing and you haven't won it from the fishing contest trinket, then come over here and grab this. I'm going to pick off this ad quick. It's on our healer. There we go. And we'll finish off the vicious fallout. Kill and loot him, and we got the lead apron. And I'll show that to you guys that are transmoggers. Ooh, you can't even see it under my tabard here, so it must be a small chest mog. Okay, we're going to head over whichever way the tank would like to go. We're trying to get to that gnome with the quest marker over there, and you'll get a mob or two along the way. Okay, turn it in. Make sure you get the next one. We're going to head on down the ramp. Don't get too far to the right here because you can pull those mobs that are down below, guys, and then they'll pat patrol up to the group. Somebody just pulled one from below. You saw the mob run up there. Sometimes it'll bring additional mobs when you do that. So just be careful you don't pull too many, guys. You can usually tell who the culprit is because the mob runs right over to him. It doesn't matter, though. You can always just pick it up. The real danger is somebody dropping down and not having um, their pet dismissed. That can pull a whole level, which is really substantial. See, the healer's got his butt too close to the edge here, and that's the second mob in. That's okay. Just more rep and more XP. The tank's had enough of this, gonna run on. Okay. 
Now, if you wanted to do Gravis, I'm sorry, I should have addressed this earlier. When we first drop down there onto the big cog, if instead of dropping down, you just head over to the left, you can do a trog boss named Grubbis. And Grubbis um, has a basilisk with him, but it's, a, it's an encounter that can take a long time because um, it's got a, like a role play element to it where they're kind of giving speeches and all that. So most groups skip it in favor of the quick run, which is actually really fast for Nomergon, which is the one it looks like this group is doing. So although it's a guide and um, I try to show all I can in these guides, I can't can't predict where the tank is going to go, guys. And tanking and trying to do a video at the same time is a little cumbersome, so that's why I choose to do DPS. BM Hunter is particularly good for the videos because they can keep moving and I can get angles and stuff and he never actually has to stop moving even while I'm trying to record the video, which is great. It's the only range class that I know of. There might be other ones, but it's the only range class that I know of that doesn't ever have to stop moving, which is a really nice benefit. At times the spec has paid for that in the history of WoW by doing less damage than other specs and getting what they call the movement penalty, meaning that, yeah, you can do less damage, um, but you're not encumbered in a raid encounter by having to... Um, do less damage by having to move out of a boss mechanic by like a Mark's Hunter, for instance. Mark's Hunter will have to cancel an aim shot to move out of the mechanic so they don't die. So there's always been this kind of penalty that you incur with the BM Hunter, but this expansion, BM Hunters um, do a tremendous amount of damage. And so that has not been there, so who knows? And these packs that you're going around here, you guys, you'll see, you can walk around either way, but you're just trying to get up to the ramp to this Executioner 6000 boss. Now, if you wanted to do the extra boss, when we came down that first ramp, you just head over that way, and then you'd go in and you'd pick up the extra boss along the way. Um, and actually, I think I can still get to him as we go down the ramp up here, so I'll show you that as well. And that's the Crowd Pummeler, which is one that really a lot of groups don't do. Okay, up here we go. Okay, so this is the Executioner 6000. Um, does kind of a lightning bolt and an AOE ability right around that'll hit the melee a little bit, but really other than that, it's not too tough of a boss fight, guys. What happens after the boss fight is more important, um, which is that there's another parachute right here. Make sure you click this. And I'll show you a way that you can jump down safely and take no damage. But most groups just fall off. And then there's mobs waiting below, so it can be a little bit troublesome. Usually the group doesn't wipe because um, everybody kind of lands in the same area anyway, so the group can kind of pick up and help. But more often than not, somebody doesn't grab the next parachute and just falls. This boss also has a really cool sword transmog if it happens to drop. And I got it, so I'll show it to you in a second. But first of all, dismiss your pets. Stand here, and we're aiming for that little line right above us there. Jump, hit your parachute. You should come right over here and land safely. You can go right over here and land right next to the quest giver. Greetings. You're set there. Get your pet back out. Let me show you that mod, guys. This is the Executioner's Leg. Really cool sword, especially if you dual wield them. Kind of like an old fencing sword. Let's see, so somebody pulled a little bit, but that's usually, a, that's a lot less than we usually get, so they did pretty good. We're just going to head down this last big ramp into the final boss. So this dungeon, which potentially can take a pretty long time, can be minimized if you just go straight through in the fastest way uh, in order to save a lot of time, guys. Okay, just make your way down the ramp over here. Okay. 
Now it's not much of a note, but if you guys look over here, this requires going all the way down and coming back up, but there's usually a rare spawn over on this side that most groups don't ever see. It's just a rare spawn dwarf, but if, you ever, if you're a completionist and you just want to go through and see it, that's there too to check out. Okay, so you get this extra quest called the Grime Encrusted Object. I usually just end up deleting it because we don't go away where we can turn it in. And I'm sorry, I should have mentioned as well, you can turn off to that crowd fumbler before you come down this ramp if you like, but we're not going that way, so... And you should have the quest updated for the G-Team, and that's to kill uh, Mechaneer Thermoplug, which is the last boss, guys. Good old pull. All right, let's do it to it. Okay, that's all done. Right over here to this big door, click on it, final chamber. <clears throat> and you guys will see the last boss of the instance, which is Mechaneer Thermoplug. Now, if you're an engineer, he'll also drop a couple extra items for you. I already got a schematic from those mobs right there. I got little Smokey, little companion pet. Okay, so for Mechaneer Thermoplug, um, first thing is that he's gonna move around the room a lot. Second thing is that he's going to have these little bombs come out and try to hit you. They're kind of like his little helpers. There's one right there. See how he's dialed in on me? Just move off of him. And he'll blow up on his own. Just keep an eye out for those. Or don't. They don't really do a tremendous amount of damage. Okay, head back over here behind the pillar and you're going to be able to turn this quest in, guys. Here you go. Turn in and we got an epic upgrade. We got some um, chain dungarees. Kind of a yellow pattern with a little bit of a stripe on it. Okay, guys, that was our guide for No Morgan. I hope you enjoyed and got something out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and hit the little bell icon if you want to get notified for future videos. Thank you guys for spending the time with me. I will catch you in the next one.